For me, skateboarding was definitely like a savior, given the circumstances of me growing up. Having to deal with the cars I was dealt. I'm from Muscochese, Alberta, Samson Cree Nation. My mom's side dates back all the way to Chief Poundmaker. He was a man of peace. Like how we would look at Mahatma Gandhi was how they looked at Chief Poundmaker with the utmost respect, holiest of the holies, you know? Knowing all this as a kid and growing up, it immediately just made me proud. seeing my cousin Mario. He ollied another board on its side and I was just blown away. Seeing these guys just launching off ramps and flying everywhere, I was like, I'm gonna get this ollie thing one day, you know? I just wanted to be accepted by the older guys. As I eventually became better at it, it was all I wanted to do. Skateboarding was my outlet. My dream was to become a professional skateboarder. I'm gonna represent and show them that young native kid fresh off the res is gonna make it happen. but my childhood wasn't the greatest. When I was 11 years old, I was taken off reserve and forced into residential school. There were boarding schools set up by the government and run by the church to destroy my people. Kill the Indian and save the child. My dad got it pretty bad, like he was sexually molested. But my grandmother went, and my mom went, and all my sisters and brothers went. I had no idea what took place at these institutions. I wasn't able to communicate with my parents. I got to see them like once or twice a year. There were 250 kids in a room with bunk beds. So you could hear kids crying, you could hear a lot of things at night. I could hear spirits in the walls from the dark history there. Who are you supposed to run to when you say, Mom, Dad, you know? Who's gonna come and protect you from these people? It definitely fucked me up. But the severity of what I've gone through is nothing compared to what my parents or my grandparents have gone through. As soon as I was of age, I pulled myself out of there. I moved to Ottawa, and that's when things started happening. I started getting recognized and making friends fast. I got sponsored quickly. But people they didn't know that I went to residential school. I just showed up and they were like, whoa, this guy's kind of rough. They're like, this guy doesn't take no shit and better watch yourself around him, you know? He's a fucking wild card. And I was. What the fuck are you staring at, you know? That was me, I was that kid. 
I was coming from a place where people tell you that you're no good, you ain't gonna amount of shit. But now people were like, whoa, do that trick again, whoa, this guy's good, give him free stuff. I was like, what? Free stuff? I like this, I'm gonna keep skating more. People that I grew up looking up to and idolizing in these magazines were now calling me to go skate. <laughs> I didn't even know that skateboarding can evolve into this family worldwide. Oh, they were just so welcoming. And I knew that I had the potential of going pro eventually. But when the opportunity arose, I didn't think I deserved it. I just never thought I was professional enough. Back then, I hadn't dealt with my childhood trauma. For decades, I used drugs and alcohol as a mask. But deep down inside, I was fucking miserable, man. You can only keep it into a jar for so long until that jar, like, is gonna explode. I made some mistakes over the years that eventually caught up with me. Jail damaged my spirit. And I felt like a caged animal. Coming out, I was even worse. I was living wherever I could, writing suicide letters. I overdosed three times in one summer, and oh, it was just hell. That's when I knew that I don't want to do this anymore. Seeing my dad lose his family on account of alcohol and drugs and the violence, he didn't know better. All my family members are still suffering from residential school trauma. It's a continuous cycle. I realized I want freedom. And I don't want this intergenerational shit to be an excuse. So I had to assess all the issues that had been troubling me since I was a child. All my wounds, all my battles, and all the suffering, you know?
first day I was sober, it was the solstice. I went to a sweat lodge in Capilano Reserve and just prayed to take this next path. Sobering up made me stronger and I feel like a completely changed person. I took all that energy that I would put into partying and survival and just put it back into my skateboard. And skateboarding for over 35 years, finally my time had come. I turned professional and I made my first pro model as a tribute to my grandfather, Chief Poundmaker. Having that childhood dream fulfilled for me, oh, it's just amazing. And now it's time to move on to the next chapter of my life. I'm 43 years old. I'm not trying to jump the mega ramp or go win an X Games or anything like that. Now I'm just getting started, you know? Joe's got his sleeves rolled up and he's, he's in. Now in the position that I am in, I want to educate and be able to share. It's got to be hard, though, having only two people in your town that skate. Yeah, it, oh it is God. hard. Cool. For you, put your bearings in there. Your front foot will kick dead, dead ahead, you know? I want to get the point across to the kids that if I can make it happen, given the circumstances of how I was raised, then there's hope out there, man. Yeah.